Hello and welcome to vlog number 20. Today, at the request of Facebook user Polypops, I'm going to talk about how diet can affect Parkinson's disease. She requested this subject weeks and weeks ago and I've been putting it off because it's such a big subject and I didn't think I could do it just as in a five minute vlog. I'm sure we can all agree that diet is important whether or not you have a health condition such as Parkinson's. If you put poor quality fuel, or the wrong fuel, in an engine, it's not going to run very well, if at all. The same goes for our bodies. One way that diet can negatively affect Parkinson's is that some of the common prescription medications are adversely affected by certain foods. The absorption of levodopa can be impacted by eating protein rich foods, so it makes sense to avoid high protein meals when taking levodopa preparations. Eat more in the way of carbohydrates and vegetables instead. People that take MAOB inhibitors such as selegiline and rosagiline should be aware of their consumption of foods that are rich in tyramine. Because MAOB inhibitors increase tyramine and too much tyramine can cause an increase in blood pressure. I'm not going to go into a list of protein and tyramine rich foods right now. I'm sure you're perfectly capable of using Google. One symptom of Parkinson's that can definitely be helped by following the right diet is constipation. Making sure that you eat plenty of fruit and vegetables will ensure that you are getting enough dietary fibre. Dried figs and prunes are great weapons in the battle against constipation and making sure that you drink plenty of fluids will also help. Low blood pressure is another symptom of Parkinson's as well as a side effect of certain medications. Increasing fluid and salt intake can help to raise it but you should always check with your doctor if you have problems with low blood pressure. I had heard that macuna prurians and broad beans, or fava beans, are rich in levodopa and could help to calm my tremor, so I tried them both. Neither of them had the slightest effect on me, but then prescription carbidopa levodopa had no effect on me either. A lot of people say that they get relief from tremor by taking one or the other. I say, if it works for you, then go for it. One of my Parkinson's symptoms is seborrheic dermatitis, for which I used to be prescribed a daily antibiotics. It was misdiagnosed as adult acne. I managed to control this condition and stop taking the antibiotic by juicing every day. I had to discontinue this after a while on cost grounds. Organic fresh vegetables in the quantities required to produce a pint of vegetable juice are very expensive. What I do these days is I have a green smoothie every morning and although it isn't as effective as juicing it does help to keep the seborrheic dermatitis under some sort of control without me having to resort to prescription drugs again. Organically grown fruit and vegetables are important I believe. The exact cause of Parkinson's disease is unknown but my doctor and several neurologists that I've spoken to have said that they think it is partly hereditary and partly environmental. The environmental element is likely to be something like pesticides, other agricultural chemicals or heavy metals such as those used in dentistry. Opinion is divided, but one thing is for sure. If you are eating non-organic fruit and vegetables, you are also likely to be ingesting a range of chemicals which you really don't want to be ingesting. Again, eating organic produce is expensive, but you can always try growing your own if you have some space, and this is what I'm trying to do. Non-organic meat and farmed fish may have growth hormone, antibiotic and pesticide residues, so I try to avoid these two where practical and affordable. The food additive mannitol and coconut oil are both the subject of much debate and I discuss these in vlog number 6, but I have noted a small improvement in my sense of smell following a couple of months of taking a tablespoon of mannitol every morning in my green smoothie and I intend to increase my intake of coconut oil at some point in the not too distant future. I'm sorry that I've only been able to scratch the surface of this subject. Perhaps I'll return to it another day and expand upon it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you would like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.